Greens. Thank you, uh, President. First of all, a um, preliminary remark to Mr. Barroso. When you speak about the crisis, please don't forget the environmental crisis, which you didn't mention when you were listing the crises around today, the environmental constraints, because we are facing uh, a number of crises, and the environmental crisis is one of the uh, greatest of them, along with the financial and economic crisis and the democratic crisis. So, you know, when you're reworking your speech, please add that in there. Secondly, Mr. Barroso, you said we need a new kind of thought, a new way of thinking, uh, a new direction. Yes, uh, but if we want a new direction, we need something, we need a compass. Which direction are we going to go in? And that's where the debate uh, between Philippe and uh, Guy gets interesting, because we do need to be sincere here. I agree with Guy when he says uh, that council, the governments, have simply not been able to come up with an answer to the crisis. They've lost their way. Uh, they veered off course. Are we going to, what are we going to do with Greece? We love Greece. We love Greece. How much do we love Greece? We don't really know. Uh, we don't know what their position is on Greece. We still don't know. So uh, they're unable uh, uh, to, to, to act. But, Guy, this parliament too is unable to act, and the European institutions too, because just because this parliament was not able to vote for transnationalists for our next elections. That shows that we uh, aren't up to this, uh, the, the debate that we are, have to deal with either. So let's go back to the compass. I'm convinced that today the federalization of Europe is a necessity. I don't agree with what you said uh, from Jack Delors, what Jack Delors said, the, the fe federation of nation states. Yes, we need a post-national Europe, but it mustn't just be a federation of states. That's what we need in Europe. Obviously, the member states in a Senate or a second house, an upper house, they will obviously play an important part in European legislation. But what's impossible today is that we have council, which is both executive and legislative at the same time. We can't go on like that. Uh, Montesquieu is spinning in his grave. The executive cannot be the le pass laws and the legislative cannot be the executive and otherwise it just won't work. Secondly, let's take the compass. No federalization. You spoke about the budget, Mr. Barroso. You were right. Uh, but let's be honest about this. I'd like to tell those people in Parliament who don't know this, that if you look at the budget, the American budget, when it was created in 1932, the federal budget was created by Roosevelt, it was 1% of America's GDP. In 1945, it was 7%. In 2012, it's 23% of, of American GDP. As long as Europe's budget stays at 1% of Europe's GDP, we won't have a European, a, a proper European social policy. It's never going to work. That means that over the past next five years, we're going to have to go from 1% to GDP for Europe to 5% of GDP for Europe's budget. That's the real debate with the member states. And that has to be done by creating our own resources. No, not the national contribution. That's the organization of national selfishness. No, the national contributions are not going to enable us to build Europe. A very simple thing. Now, Mr. Barroso, you spoke about flex security. Of course, it's right flexibility on the labour market, but on condition that we have uh, security for those who do the work. Now take a country like Greece. A country like Greece where there's, it's, it's incredible their unemployment rate. Do you think that if today you organise flexibility on the labour market the way you want to impose it on us, and Guy was right, that do you think that they'll be able to pay for their social security? If we want, for some of our poorer countries, we want flex security for those countries, whether we're talking about Greece or Spain or Italy or others that are in, have serious unemployment problems, 
we can't do that. We have to help them with the European budget for Social Security because otherwise they can't do it and we can't do it. So if you want a real social pact, if you want Europe to be able, like the American budget does this for some of their states because they can't provide that security, well with 1% with the best will in the world and the Commission, you won't be able to do it. So that's the compass today. The federalization of Europe is that. A social redemption fund for Greece, now, right now. And to tell Greece the truth at long last. The truth that you can have an adjustment policy, but let's be honest about this and open about this. It's all over. We've got to give them time to pay. We've got to give them time. It's obvious. We've got to put money aside for Greece. It's no longer possible. You know, we can't have a woman working part-time in a supermarket in Greece earning 150 euros. And to my dear colleagues, on the far right in Greece, they're going around knocking on doors in Greece today. They're giving the families 10 euros, 30 euros, 50 euros. It's a lot. They're doing what Islamists are doing in other countries. Is the European Union in this situation, in this crisis, not capable of setting up a social redemption fund to solve the problems of the crisis in countries like Greece so the people of Greece can come back to Europe and not go to the far right? That's the fascization of Greek society. There you are. There's the compass. It's simple. More of intervention uh, capabilities for a European budget, a bigger European budget, a social redemption fund for the crisis for the European countries that are going through crises, and of course with that and the other proposals we've had from other sources, we will get back Europe citizens, or a majority of them, behind Europe. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. Barroso. Mr. Cohn Bendit, we have a question for you from the Earl of Dartmouth. Yes, Mr. Cohn Bendit, why can't you understand that federalism, European regulations, and the wasteful, wasted European budgets are no cure for the European disease? They are the cause of the European disease. Mr. Earl, why can't you understand that the time of the Earls are over? They are not the solution of the democracy. Can't you understand this? That we are, that we are in a time, where we are in a time that in 30 years, none of the European nation state, neither Great Britain, neither Germany will be part of the G8. Can't you understand? This is this time over. You can write poems about it. I'm sad about it. I understand that an Earl is sad about it, but it's the cruel reality of the modern world. Can't you, Mr. Earl, understand the modern world?